I'm told that because of global warming, there are more hurricanes and that hurricanes are stronger. And of course, we know you're supposed to put masking tape on your windows in the shape of an X or an asterisk to reinforce the glass. So most of us understand that those are just facts. Why am I talking about them on a show about summer myths? Because none of it's true, says the National Hurricane Center. Fox meteorologist Maria Molina says it too. So what do you mean? I'm, I, I've always taped the windows, but let's start with the first one. <laughs> I hear there are more hurricanes and it makes sense. Global warming, the water's warmer, it's worse. Yeah, so a lot of people think that there are more hurricanes now than in the past, and that is absolutely false. There is no data to support that, and we've actually seen in the data that in past years, we have actually seen more hurricane activity. In the 1880s, there were more hurricanes making landfall in the United States than in current years, and you can see that on that chart right there. Now, I think logically people try to make sense of it. So you mentioned global warming, the oceans are warmer, hurricanes need warm ocean waters to right. fuel themselves with, be worse. to get stronger, to form. There are countervailing forces when water gets warmer that even the experts still don't understand. Don't fully understand. And hurricanes are a lot more complicated than just warm ocean waters. Now, the property damage does keep going up. But that's just because more people build on the coasts. Possibly because more people build on the coasts. And also reports of severe weather have been going up, let's say, in terms of tornadoes. So that's another type of myth. But you have to also remember, population goes up, people move. It's easier to report severe storms. There are we more reports social... doesn't mean there are more storms. Exactly. Social media has made it much easier for people to be able to share information. People have cell phones now cameras. People can take pictures of the severe storms and report it much easier than 50 years ago. All right. Second myth. Tape your windows. This just makes sense. This is scary. <laughs> this is not something anyone should be doing. Think about it. If you put tape on your windows, debris comes, hits the window. Typically, it would shatter it if you didn't have tape on there. You have tape on there. It's going to break the windows, and now you have potentially larger pieces of glass, potentially deadlier pieces of glass flying around. But oh, every time a hurricane's coming, they show pictures of people doing it. And your colleagues are saying, you ought to do, people don't know this. And the, it was the Weather Service originally that suggested this, though now they've taken it back. That's right. It was printed on old meteorological brochures. So people were seeing this as the official thing to do. So it made it very confusing for people to hear that originally. And now we're telling them, do not do it. And I believe about 70% of people currently in the southeastern United States believe this is what you should be doing. It's a scary statistic. Please do not put tape on your windows. Stay away from the windows. Stay away from the windows. Uh, what you should be doing during a hurricane is be in a room with no windows and also on a lower part of your home. Another myth some people believe, you should open the window to equalize the pressure so as the storm comes, it won't blow the glass out. Yeah, so no home is airtight. So that pressure will be equalized. And storms anyway, anyway yeah, they're so big. They're hundreds of miles wide. So that it pressure change. slowly. Exactly. Happens slowly. Don't open the window. Don't. If you open the window, it just lets. Lets the wind in, lets the debris in. And actually what the wind coming into your home will do is possibly blow down the walls of your home. And then your roof is gone. Four, uh, animals act differently when the storms approach. This is very interesting, right? That animals could instinctively know when a hurricane is approaching. And there has been research done that sharks, this research from Florida, that sharks actually seek deeper water when a hurricane is approaching. So this one is true. Just because we call it a myth doesn't mean it can't be true. Some myths turn out to be, they're just sayings, and some are true. And this one also is birds sensitive to air pressure air changes. They hunker down before the hurricane. They hunker down, that's right. So they know when it's approaching. So watch the animals. Another myth, Hurricane Katrina was the deadliest hurricane in history. 1,800 deaths, pretty bad. Pretty bad, and unfortunately, it's not the deadliest storm in the United States. The 1900th um, Hurricane Galveston, so back in the year 1900, 1900 uh, actually 8,000 deaths in the United States. So that was a Category 4 storm, hit Galveston, Texas. Just heartbreaking. Thank you, Maria. Now, the most controversial weather myth. I'm told extreme weather is getting worse because of global warming. None can avoid the devastating impact of raging fires and crippling drought and more powerful storms. Raging fires, drought, more powerful storms. What are we going to do? 
Well, let's ask the author of High Tide on Main Street, Rising Sea Level and the Coming Coastal Crisis. That's oceanographer John Englander. Let's also ask climatologist Pat Michaels of the Cato Institute. So, Pat, should I be so scared, as the president suggests? That's so 20th century. What's happened in the last 10 years is forecasts of global warming, particularly in the last two years, have begun to come down. We're seeing the so-called sensitivity of temperature being, being reduced by 40% in the new climate models. So that means we're going to live. the old climate models predicted. The old climate models were too hot. That's finally being recognized. All right, so it's 40% less, but that's, if, there are, if, if weather is worse, that's a problem. If you look at hurricanes, tornadoes, these things really don't show the signals that they're supposed to. And they haven't. Increased. You know, there's this whole big thing about billion dollar disasters. You've heard that. Billion dollar disasters are going up. Well, what you have to do is you have to take the damage and adjust it for gross domestic product and inflation. And when you look at that, it simply has no trend whatsoever. That more people spend more. There's more stuff in the way of the weather. All right, John, you don't buy all the scaremongering, but you are scared about parts of it. Right, absolutely, because the ice sheets are melting. We've seen photographs of the polar ice cap diminishing year by year, decade by decade. Pat's right that there are variations within years. You can take a seven-year time frame or a 17-year time frame and get a different picture. But we've also reached a bit of a tipping point, or turning point, I should say, because we're now at a warming period when actually we should be entering the 80,000 years going toward the next ice age. Now, nobody cares about the next ice age, obviously. But the fact that the oceans are warmer, eight-tenths of a degree Celsius, degree and a half Fahrenheit, and that the oceans are rising. New Jersey, New York's 14 inches higher than a year ago, 100 years ago. And we just see the photographs of the Arctic ice cap disappearing, but then we go to Greenland, as Pat and I have been, and uh, Antarctica, and we can see signs of increased melting for the long term, which will raise the ocean. So, as your book says, a coming coastal crisis. Why a crisis? Why can't we just it's not adjust? This. It's, well, we can, and actually, and actually I think that's exactly what we need to do. We should slowly adjust. We should realize that after 6,000 years of stability, that sea level is going up, and we need to begin planning because it's going to have drastic uh, you know, catastrophic effects on our shorelines all over the world. Pat, do you dispute this? John, we've been adapting. Over half the sea level rise on much of the East Coast doesn't have anything to do with uh, the water. It has to do with the fact that the land is sinking. So these 14-inch rises that you've seen in New Jersey, I think 18 inches at the southern end of Chesapeake Over the Bay, past 100, 100 years. years. If, we if haven't you, noticed you, them. You, for exactly. The most part. You would not have noticed that unless somebody told you that it happened down there. The but adaptation is a slow, steady thing, and that's what people do. You're shaking your head in disgust here. Well, Pat's a great professional contrarian, and, and I've read his stuff for years. But let's be practical here. In Miami Beach, now there are streets there flooded during lunar high tide a couple of days a month. And the wheels of cars are actually rusting out in some neighborhoods because they're getting salt water on them regularly. Okay, now that's different than has been the case for a hundred years. What do you want to do about it? We need to realize that it's happening because that means we, we need to slowly adjust our shorelines, our architecture, build up, set back, come up with technologies like the Dutch do, where they actually allow for storms to go through the ground floor of buildings. So, Pat, I assume you don't dispute that, and I assume you don't dispute John's point about the melting ice in Greenland and the Arctic. Well, wait the a Arctic. minute. I, I certainly don't agree with him on Antarctica. Antarctica is the largest body of ice on Earth. 90% of the world's ice is in Antarctica. Computer models for the 21st century, if we're going to believe these things, they actually predict that Antarctica gains ice. Why? Because the ocean around Antarctica warms up a little bit. There's more water vapor in the air, and when it's converged over the continent, what do you think it falls as? Rain? Snow. No, it falls as snow. And the southern hemisphere ice is expanding. John is saying no. Antarctica is a little complicated to understand. It's, uh, it's the biggest... It's all ice. complicated. Okay, but, but Antarctica is confusing because it looks all white. It looks the same. Pat's right. The East Antarctic part, two-thirds of the continent, is growing because more moisture in the air from a warmer ocean goes up, and it's got to come down as rain or snow, and there it comes down as snow. Okay. So East Antarctica is getting thicker and, and has overcome the loss on West Antarctica for, until about three years ago. But Antarctica now is losing because there's some glaciers there that could slide into the ocean in a decade and cause some catastrophes. All right, we're not going to solve this, but do either of you not drive a car or say we can do anything about this in terms of not 
causing global warming. I go short on apocalypse futures. I have lived through nine end of the world environmental apocalypses, beginning with Silent Spring. And you know, we're still here and I have a feeling this is just going to be one in a long series. I think ocean acidification will be its replacement. That's a prediction. You John, you, you want to tax carbon. You want to do I something think, about it. I think it. we should price carbon. I believe the free market and, and I actually do not. Doesn't that mean know, to tax carbon? There's got to be some pricing mechanism. We, or we have to get, also we need to get away from the subsidies like coastal flood insurance because one of the problems we're going to face. We agree on that. Yes, I lost do. a beach house. I think we, we have a picture of it here. <laughs> How stupid is this? The government encouraged me to build on the edge of an ocean. We need to stop subsidizing and letting people think that if they build in harm's way, the government's going to come there and pay for their rebuilding.